disorder of carbohydrate metabolism primarily, but also of fat and protein metabolism. Ultimately, for the common man, diabetes means increased blood glucose. Why would blood glucose rise? It rises either because insulin is deficient or because there is resistance to insulin action. Insulin is a hormone that is secreted from the beta cells of the pancreas that pushes the glucose into the cell and allows the cell to utilize that glucose. So if there is deficient insulin or resistance to insulin action, there will be high blood glucose and that is what is called diabetes. So there are classic symptoms of diabetes which are excessive thirst, excessive urination, sometimes even excessive hunger, some people lose a lot of weight, some people present with infections that don't heal, some may present with just fatigue, blurring of vision, all kinds of things uh, can be features of diabetes. But it's important to realize that roughly half the people with type 2 diabetes we are talking primarily of type 2 diabetes, don't even know that they have it. So very many times diabetes is picked up only on a routine health check, right? where the person has no symptoms and has just gone for a health check. Therefore, and we will come to that later, it's very important for those who are at risk to check their blood glucose even if they don't have any symptoms at all. Three tests to diagnose diabetes. One is a fasting blood sugar or blood glucose. The second is a post glucose blood glucose, where you give someone glucose orally and then measure the, the, the blood glucose after that. And the third is doing a test called HbA1c, which is a measure of the last three months average blood glucose. So if your blood glucose fasting is below 100, you are not a diabetic. If it's between 100 and 126, you are what would be called as impaired fasting glucose or pre-diabetes. If your fasting value is above 126 on two occasions, you are clearly a diabetic patient. What about post-glucose? Now, when you, when you consume 75 grams of anhydrous glucose, Two hours after that, if your value of blood glucose is below 140, you are not a diabetic. If it is between 140 and 199, you have what is called impaired glucose tolerance or another form of pre-diabetes. So one is pre-diabetes fasting between 100 to 126 and the other is pre-diabetes which is between 140 and 199 after glucose. Right? The third measure, of course, is a more stable measure that is an HbA1c, which I said reflects last three months average blood glucose. And in that, if you find numbers below 5.7, it's a blood test. Nowadays, a simple blood test. Below 5.7 HbA1c, not a diabetic. 5.7 to 6.4, pre diabetes. Above 6.4, for that is 6.5 and above, you are then classified as someone who has diabetes. So there are many kinds of diabetes, but for simplicity's purpose, we will we'll, we'll stick to just the broad varieties that is type 1 and type 2. Again, as I said, this is for purposes of simplicity, otherwise it's become fairly complex, there are many varieties of type 2 also. So what is this type 1 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes happens when you get deficiency in insulin secretion. That is, the pancreatic beta cells are not able to make enough insulin. We just discussed the pathophysiology. If the beta cells are not able to make enough insulin, so there is a secretion, there is a deficiency of insulin in the body. And that leads to type 1 diabetes, typically seen in children. 
But now we realize a lot of the adults we see, a significant proportion of them can also have type 1 diabetes. The other type of diabetes, which is the common garden variety of diabetes, the one that is exponentially increasing in India, you know, uh, which is linked to obesity and bad lifestyle. The type 1 diabetes, the one that I discussed, is not linked to lifestyle. That is an autoimmune or viral condition. Type 2 diabetes, the common variety of diabetes, that is linked to lifestyle. And what is the defect there? There it's a combination of two defects. Insulin resistance is classic, which means that there is circulating insulin in the body, but it's not able to act at the cellular level. So the gates for insulin to enter the cell and the glucose to then subsequently enter the cell, they are blocked. So more and more insulin is secreted to compensate for that and in early stages of diabetes you may find high insulin levels. Ultimately the pancreas actually packs up and the secretion of insulin goes down and that's when you get full-fledged or overt type 2 diabetes. A combination of insulin resistance and insulin deficiency is what leads to type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is purely an insulin deficiency, a secretory defect that is caused by an autoimmune or viral origin. Again, for type 1 diabetes, you can't screen. It comes with symptoms, it comes more or less as a subacute or acute onset. And you know, the child is losing weight and you know, the child is drinking a lot of water and just shrinking. You know. Then those are the kids where you will test for type 1 diabetes, but that's different. What is meant here is screening in normal adult population with diabetes being so high. Some data indicate in cities like Delhi, for example, at the age of 40, almost 20% people already have diabetes, right? So obviously there is, there has to be, you have to test and we've already told you that half of them don't even know they have it. They have no symptoms. So when should we screen? Basically, the American Diabetes Association now recommends that anyone over the age of 18 with other risk factors, which means like family history, obesity, a history of polycystic ovarian disease, all those risk factors should be screened at least once above the age of 18. And if they are normal, then every three to four years. Right? But that's difficult, isn't it, to, to, to implement in day-to-day -day practice. Every one of our 18 should be screened. So what is a more rational guideline is definitely all above 35 in the American system and all above 30 because Indians seem to get diabetes earlier. The ICMR recommends a cutoff of 30. So all those adults above the age of 30 in India should be screened for diabetes and if it's normal the screening can be repeated every three years otherwise it can be you know more frequently if someone already has three diabetes we want to screen every year or you know follow them up there are a lot of experts who feel that even this 30 is actually a high age given the way we are seeing diabetes people like me who've been seeing people with diabetes for 40 years uh, have seen a huge shift in the age at onset of diabetes and therefore we do like to believe that maybe even at 25 we should start screening. But the guideline is 30 for India and 35 for the West. And the point that ADA makes about the 18 year age is also very important because I think if someone is, is not, not completely healthy at the young age of 19, 20, is obese, has family history, it may not be a bad idea to screen him or her also. In fact, if the patient is obese enough to seek attention in the clinic, even if the child is 12 years old, 14 years old, we still test for type 2 diabetes. We do a screening test for diabetes. Okay, so I think it's important to remember that screening is very, very uh, crucial to pick up a disease that often has no symptoms and which can have devastating consequences in terms of complications even though there are no symptoms initially.
I think that's that's very very important. People who have risk factors, uh, yes, we should screen them earlier with the same tests that I described. Who are these people? What does the risk factors mean? I already mentioned one of them, the dominant one again and again, that is obesity, is a very very important risk factor. A family history is a very important risk factor. But in addition to that, those who have a sedentary lifestyle, even though they are not obese, don't have a family history, but they do no exercise at all, and many of our urban Indians are like that now, so they also should be tested. Those who have high blood pressure, so you go to the doctor for high blood pressure, but you need tests for blood glucose if you have hypertension. If you have a cholesterol problem, especially if it's a low HDL and high triglyceride, even then you should get a blood sugar done. Right? Uh, there are so many other conditions like women or girls who had a history of polycystic ovarian disease or women who had a history of that when they were girls, they are definitely more likely to get diabetes and require frequent screening or frequent testing. Any woman who has given birth to a child and, and, and has actually during pregnancy developed something we call gestational diabetes. Okay? Such a lady who has history of diabetes during pregnancy should be also tested in future life. I think those are some of the important risk factors for type 2 diabetes and we are not including other less common risk factors. These are the most important ones that we need to remember. So if I were to tell you which is the most commonly asked question in my OPD these days, that question is, doctor, can my diabetes be reversed? It's something that everyone wants to know, especially when they are diagnosed, but you will be surprised sometimes people with 15 years history, 20 years history also want to reverse their diabetes. So what is this whole phenomenon of reversal? What is this the noise about reversing diabetes? So first, it is not truly reversal because we don't know diabetes is a progressive disease. A reversal means something that is gone forever. It is probably remission which means that you have gone into a state where your diabetes is normal, you are non-diabetic at the moment, but we don't know when it will come back. Because we don't know yet, we call it remission. If we are able to show in lots of people it doesn't come back at all, then it will be called reversal. But for practical purposes, for scientific purposes, at the moment remission is a better word. Right? Because ultimately diabetes is a progressive condition and might catch up with you 10 years, 15 years, 20 years later. So what is this whole noise about can I reverse my diabetes? Firstly, it should be can I remit, can my diabetes go into remission? But yes, yeah, it's not something that's new. No new advance in, in science has happened that tells you suddenly this, now we know how to reverse diabetes. No, we always know how to do it. If you are young, if you are overweight, and if you are within the first 5 years or at the most 10 years of development of your diabetes, if you work hard, if you weight, lose significant amount of weight and bring, come back to ideal body weight, exercise regularly, then a significant proportion of people can re reverse if you like or can make their diabetes go into remission, induce remission uh, in diabetes. So what is the one line that we heard here? Weight reduction. For type 2 diabetes, the only way to go into remission is to lose weight. More than 80% of people with type 2 diabetes are overweight at diagnosis. Some say the figure is 90%. So if they are able to lose weight in the initial few months or years of their diabetes, let's say 10% of their body weight, sometimes 15%. If they lose that kind of, those kind of numbers, there is a strong possibility that they may be able to reverse their diabetes. So you need young age, recent onset, obesity. If these three factors are there, you could definitely try for uh, inducing remission in diabetes and at least getting rid of it for several years. 
but it requires a lot of effort to lose that weight. It's not that easy as it is to speak out. And you know, when, when we tell patients, just lose weight, you know, your diabetes will go away. Oh, but that always comes as a blow because it's not so easy to lose weight. So if you follow a structured diet program with low calorie food, coupled with exercise, there is a possibility. And definitely if you're young, you should try and do that. So education is a very important uh, component of diabetes management. If you are educated today about your diabetes, you can protect your tomorrow. And that is the theme of the World Diabetes Day. We think that the best person to take care of your diabetes is you. Unless you are involved yourself in your care, doctors cannot help you beyond a point. It's a little bit like the, the player and the coach. You are the player. You are on the field, you are on the 22 yard strip batting and the coach is, can only advise from outside. So educate yourself about diabetes to have a wonderful healthy tomorrow.